Hello guys, this is Vaish. So today's editorial, August 29, and uh, today one uh, important thing is that today is the 50th episode. Okay, we started last month and July month completely done. Now August is going to be done in two days, and uh, hopefully, if you support, we'll do it uh, throughout the year. Uh, so episode 50, it's a good thing, a good achievement. Uh, continuously, we have done. We used to do like this uh, two years back. Also, we had started the editorial, but because of lack of participation, we had to stop it. Okay. So today, interesting articles are there. One uh, is uh, you know the sex education, sexual education. That is a, a thing which should be promoted across the nation. So that related movies have come. So that we'll discuss. Okay. An article has come. So we'll discuss that. And also, uh, India Greece relationship. Uh, because the uh, Prime Minister recently visited there. Uh, after 40 years, uh, one Indian Prime Minister is visiting Greece. So that makes it uh, special. Okay. So some outcomes are there, the meetings, outcomes that we'll discuss and a uh, few more articles are there. Okay. And before going to the headlines, another great achievement which we got uh, uh, today is actually National Sports Day and uh, uh, we got it like yesterday uh, achievement like uh, the first gold at the World Athletics. Okay. This is not Olympics. This is an Athletics uh, Championship, World Athletics Championship. And uh, since 1983, India is participating uh, in this and Neeraj Chopra got the first gold for us now after 30-40 uh, years you can tell. So uh, before we have got medals like we have got uh, bronze uh, in 2003 itself we got uh, uh, bronze uh, Anju Bobby George for women's long jump and then uh, Neeraj Chopra last year got the silver and uh, Neeraj Chopra now got the gold uh, this year. So three medals only we got uh, since 1983 but uh, it's a good thing that uh, many nice nice things are happening back to back. Okay the Chandrayaan launch happened immediately now this is gold now next week the our mission will be there which will be hopefully successful so every month some great great achievements along with our other uh, financial and economic achievements in gdp and per capita income india is uh, leading in the uh, race of uh, developing okay when everybody is trying to become a developed nation india is actually leading that race in the world because china is little bit going down and uh, india is uh, booming okay compared to other uh, emerging economies india is the leading uh, person in the race so this uh, details and all you can simply see basic same thing only the events and the uh, uh, by gender and by year wise how many and everything i've told you but this is the statistics in uh, wikipedia okay so it's a good thing and now we'll see the editorial headlines if you see here uh, the first article is the same thing, Neeraj Chopra, he got the first ever gold for India in the world athletics and then uh, we have this uh, Gyan given by someone, I did not like this article, okay, when I told when these positive things are happening, he is concerned about all the, meaning, you first tell good thing about that, he is telling Chandrayaan 3 that is fine, that is nothing to cheer about, okay, meaning a saddest kind of language will be there, right, this is okay, but uh, what about uh, Kashmir, do you think you have solved all the issues, do you think Manipur, everything you have solved, uh, then go behind, the, meaning when positive happens, you should learn to appreciate also and then only negative when you happen you can criticize both should happen equally this is like that full article is negative you are pointing out everything in india in a bad light so that doesn't make sense that too in this context of year okay criticism is needed but not where like only criticism is there okay so that article i will not discuss if you want you can read by yourself okay then this one g20 summit is happening uh, september uh, 9th i think so that time uh, new delhi will be completely kind of shut down also because i think central schools and uh, offices everything will be given holiday around 150 flights are cancelled because you know these global leaders 20 global leaders from different countries uh, uh, the main heads are coming to india so their security is also our responsibility so uh, they all will be coming and uh, that time uh, many things will be discussed and on and part of that the environment is one major concern so the author is suggesting some things i think two three steps he is suggesting or two three things which should be mandatorily done and decided in this particular meeting when these uh, g20 leaders will come together okay so that we'll discuss and then here india greece that will be our first article so, uh, 1, 2 and this one, 3. Okay, the next page, the uh, sex education. These three we will discuss. Okay, and this one is a local news, not required. And this is again some economics random charts they have given. Okay, something per capita, something, something and all. It is uh, nothing to take away. Okay, so three articles is our uh, concern. So, again, I am telling uh, two more days, uh, the all the packs, everything will get closed. Whoever is preparing for whatever government job, whatever exam, where current affair or uh, general awareness or something is, meaning things in the news is required for you in that exam these packs will help you okay so individual packs like uh, the upcoming 12 months the previous 12 months and backdated up to back four years so total five years in total we have individual packs also 12 12 months uh, pack and also we have the combo of those like two year three year five years so these offer prices okay these packs will be available throughout the till next year these packs will be open for enrollment but the offer prices you will not get later so please come and whatsapp me whatsapp number is given here and don't miss this chance okay same applies to the 2024 batch 2 test series okay which had around two 80 days of study timetable which started this week and you can daily sit and study as per i tell and as per the pdfs which we give but uh 
if you miss this, then the batch three, which some people are asking, we may launch it. We may launch it after one month or maybe after 15 days. We don't know. Based on our uh, timeline and availability, we'll do it. But that time, you know, the time to study will again get shrinked. Maybe you will get only 200 days. You will get only 180 days. In 180 days, how much syllabus you can complete? Okay, you have to study your prelims, your mains, your answer writing. There are many things, right? So that's why I'm telling join this batch itself. Again, discount installment, we have kept it till the August 31. After that, we will definitely close it because the numbers of students have exceeded. Okay. So please uh, contact me in WhatsApp immediately. The number is given here on screen and we'll start with our very first article for the day that is uh, Greece. Okay, Greece or India-Greece relationship. So first always I show you maps because maps is something which I uh, urge the students to buy heart. You should know every point on the global map only then you are a good aspirant. Okay, global map and then after that the Indian map also in detail. So here if you see this um, Greece is a small country which you can see like a very small country in the Mediterranean Sea region uh, below the Europe you can tell but it is very near to Asia near to Turkey. I will show you zoomed in maps so that you understand. So if you zoom in there, Greece is uh, having bordering countries of Albania, North Macedonia and Bulgaria. Okay. Yesterday also I told you North Macedonia. I think uh, Mother Teresa's uh, birthplace was somewhere there. Okay. Yugoslavia which used to exist uh, that area. Okay. So then uh, Greece is there, capital is Athens and Greece was going through a lot of economic uh, problems and all and slowly now only their elections happened and that person got re-elected and they are slowly slowly recovering from economics issue. Not only economic, uh, from Africa many many people people okay the migrants and refugee which i discussed in yesterday's article they are all moving towards greece and they had that that issue also okay so full economic crisis they are slowly recovering and now was the best time and that is why india uh, pm after the BRICS summit which happened in south africa instead of going coming directly to india he went there to greece and then stayed there and had some meetings and signed some things and then only he came directly to I think Bangalore where he went to ISRO and met the scientist also then only he went back to the office in Delhi okay so it was a very uh, a packed schedule and so in Greece if you see it has a little problems tensions with Turkey also and Turkey is a, a country which has problems with India also even though we helped them during uh, the uh, earthquakes and all Turkey uh, always takes Pakistan side in the United Nations whenever some voting happens. Kashmir issue always stays Pakistan side every time. Okay, every time it's an anti-India anti stance. So that reason you tell no your enemy's uh, enemy will be your friend. That kind of potential is there between India and Greece. And uh, I show you more things, more uh, maps and things. Then only you will understand why Greece and Turkey is fighting. Here you see a small island, Cyprus. Cyprus it's a country. So Cyprus also there is like North Cyprus. There's a divide because of war and all. But uh, Turkey is trying to capture some areas of that and that Greece don't like it so that reason okay so that reason you can tell uh, 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 they both have tensions so and India supports Cyprus okay so India's and Greece uh, standpoint is uh, same when it comes to Cyprus so that is the reason uh, India Greece relation can improve now a little more geography I'll teach you these seas are important if you see here Asian sea is there okay here Turkey's capital is Ankara okay many people uh, think it is Istanbul it's not Istanbul Istanbul is the one which actually connects between uh, Europe and uh, uh, Asia but here capital is Ankara and then Asian Sea is one important thing here Mediterranean Sea is there and I will show you uh, some more important seas and straits from which question actually comes this one here there is Asian Sea okay here there is Sea of Marmara here there is Black Sea then here there is Sea of Azov okay so these four UPSC have asked questions in one form or the other uh, over the years okay so these uh, seas becomes important what are the countries around it becomes important like uh, Asian Sea is uh, surrounded by which countries okay or Greece is surrounded by which country Mediterranean Sea is surrounded by which countries okay then again Black Sea's question already has come and then another important thing we will again zoom in this area okay this is very very important this area is zoomed in because one sea, when it connects to one sea, another sea, right? This small water body is called a strait, S-T-R-A-I-T. So in both sides of Sea of Marmara, there is strait. Okay, because there will be a small water body which connects Sea of Marmara to Black Sea, another small water body which connects Sea of Marmara to Asian Sea. So these two straits are again important, which you see here. Asian Sea is connected to the Dardanelles Strait and the Black Sea is connected uh, with the Bosphorus Strait. Okay, I am talking with the Sea of Marmara. Okay, with the Sea of Marmara, both the Black Sea and the Asian Sea are connected by two different straits, that is Bosphorus Strait and Dardanelles Strait. Okay, so here again you see, you can see a little detailed map. So, uh, 
small water body connecting two bigger water bodies is called a strait okay like that what is a gulf what is a canal what is a uh, uh, okay this kind of many terms uh, straits gulf and uh, isthmus will be there isthmus is again the opposite of this isthmus is a land which connects two landforms okay that you will see near panama and all you can find that so this is the basic map locations again if you see here again you will ask like when black sea is connecting with sea of azov there also one strait should be there so that is actually this one kerch okay kerch strait connects the sea of azov with the black sea so these many gk points i am telling you extra because today greece we are discussing okay none of this is there in today's hindu and all we will now directly go to the hindu okay but before that again okay i have put two more slides of gk facts okay that is the ancient to modern timeline of indian historical relation in, with greece first alexander invaded us around in 326 bc then uh, the edict okay rock edict and pillar edict of ashoka it mentioned about some diplomatic relations between uh, seleucus uh, one and chandragupta maurya okay seleucus i think seleucus nicator was his name so he and uh, chandragupta maurya had some relationship from greece and india so that was uh, there printed or edicted on his uh, that thing okay that rock edict and then uh, indo greek cultural exchanges started where again greek rulers this demetrius and meander one okay came into northwestern india and had some little bit of ruling power there and then uh, art sculpture all these things you know in the buddhism time many like gandhara school and all adopted uh, the greek form of uh, buddhist uh, idols and statues and all and so greco buddhist art and gandhara the bahmian buddhas in afghanistan these all are a connection between the indian subcontinent and the uh, greece okay so again if you see uh, uh, this is the ancient till now okay but after that for uh, after independence you can tell around 65 years it has gone very smoothly okay it has gone very smoothly our relationships and uh, we have established diplomatic diplomatic relationships in may 1950 uh, embassy in athens in march 1978 we established there then um bilateral vvip visits have been happening including our uh, president apj abdul karam visited in 2007 a greek prime minister came to india in 2008 then nsg is the nuclear supplier group okay you know there are four big groups when it comes to these uh, weapons and chemicals and all these things that is this mtcr that is a missile related then vasenar arrangement and the australian group so india got uh, membership in all these three okay and all the time greece used to support india and in, voted in favor of india and nsg also voted but nsg's problem is china is part of nsg okay other three group china is not part but uh, nsg china is part nuclear supplier group uh, and that is the reason china has veto power and so they don't allow india ever to reach there because they are telling if india has to be allowed pakistan also would be allowed but that doesn't make sense okay pakistan is not a responsible nation that you can allow them to be part of nuclear supplier group so that debate is still going on but greece is in our side when it comes to the voting okay and uh, then kashmir issue they support pakistan uh, sponsored terrorism they oppose okay and then as i told cyprus issue UNIF un reforms everywhere they support so this is a i'm taking you to the gk fact which you should use if a question comes on india greek relationship which is a very rare thing to come but still in mains gs2 if it comes you can use this okay and now modern day greek is looking for indian investment that's why indian companies like this gmr group is uh, bidding for some project and developing their uh, heraklion airport and all at that crete island crete island that also in the map i showed you uh, that time while explaining somewhere down see here here one airport is there that india is helping and uh, developing okay then Uh, indian entrepreneurs and uh, this msme industries everybody are participating in the one international fair happens okay an exhibition kind of thing happens in northern greece every year which is called the thessaloniki international fair that there india participates okay and same like that uh, the trade uh, if is like now around 1.32 billion euros worth of uh, trade we are doing where main items of export from greece to india is uh, cotton then some scrap of aluminium and all these uh, raw material kind of thing marble granite calcium carbonate meaning everything needed for our industry as a raw materials that we are uh, bringing from greece same way uh, india is giving to them uh, the uh, pet finished products like this uh, petroleum products uh, automobile components uh, mobile uh, sorry automobiles and uh, this uh, flat rolled steel items okay this and all we are giving to greece from india then again defense related uh, we have participated in this blue flag exercise actually it's not a greece exercise it's an israel's exercise there we and uh, greece both have participated as members in 2021 and then greece hosted something called the in in new chost uh, uh, 23 okay recently so, uh, their air force later so indian air force participated there okay with our uh, uh, the sukhoi and this uh, c17 aircraft we have participated so this many details i have given you so next time any question comes on india greece this is enough so in future if an article comes also i will not repeat all these things i expect that students have made notes out of it and uh, this is will this will be sufficient more than this you don't have to study about india greece relationship okay maps also i showed you so now the hindu article okay what is given in the hindu so speaking after a bilateral meeting with that 
uh, Greece Prime Minister, okay, this person who recently got uh, uh, re-elected, uh, we have told like we should build a strategic partnership, okay, which we usually do with only close partners, a strategic partnership and uh, first Prime Minister since 1983, so it's 40 years since any Prime Minister went. So we told our warmth has not decreased, we are all like friends only all the time even though we don't meet each other and all, but that's all just for dialogues only. Actually, they are not meeting or they are not having relationships like we have with France, Spain, Italy, Cyprus, we have better trade and ties and all and meetings also. So, this is just a welcome note he is telling, Modi is telling. Okay. So, strategic partnership and then regular meeting of our national security advisors will happen. Then skilled migration and mobility partnership we will focus on. Then India, European Union free trade negotiation is going on. Okay. Connectivity and all these things. So, Greece will again support and participate in those things. So, as I told from Alexander's time, we have exchanges and then now tourism and trade, everything is going on above 2 billion dollar. Now, India's manufacturing hub, that is the India's ambition now and uh, you, Greece also uh, apparently want to become an economic gateway to the EU, meaning it's like the starting point, right, to enter the EU. So, they want to be the economic gateway of EU. So, both of you, if you come together, you can uh, do wonders. Okay, so that is what Modi was telling. And then again, uh, once India and Greece both used to be uh, colonial powers, under the colonial powers, okay, plundered by the colonial, colonial powers. So, there will be a lot of artifacts also, maybe some Indian statues and things are there in Greece or maybe Greece some things are there in India. Some things can be there. So, that and all you will exchange those artifacts, you will uh, take UNESCO's help uh, to exchange these things uh, to each other, okay. then. Um, as I told, several years of economic trouble they were going through and also China, China, you know, they will go and give, keep giving soft loan to every country. Finally, that nation will become an economic uh, debt trap and all. So, now they want to diversify. They want uh, more options. That is why they are looking for India, who is the next booming economy after uh, China. Okay. So, um, uh, Greece, has, uh, Greece has strengthened its ties with Israel and Cyprus also, with which India also has good friendship. And as I told, the Turkey issue also, Delhi, Ankara tensions are going on because Turkey always support uh, the Islamic uh, things, the Pakistani favoring things, all the things they uh, tell in an anti-India stance. So, that is why uh, India can become a good friend to uh, Greece. Okay, and once they were ancient maritime powers also uh, in India and Greece. So, that also common interest you can build in the uh, Mediterranean Sea and also in the Indo-Pacific region. You can do some maybe maritime exercises and all which till now is not there. We can maybe think about that. Okay, so the uh, Greece president uh, also, Prime Minister also told the landing of Chandrayaan 3 is a good positive sign. Okay, like it's a good time now to, it's a positive sign that uh, we should become friends. That is, we are the relation between the most populous democracy and the first democracy. Okay, first democracy is Greece and the most populous democracy is uh, India. So, both should use uh, this favorable wind and uh, set the course uh, and uh, without allowing another four decades to lap, meaning don't wait another 40 years now to have our next meeting and all, we should have a better uh, trade uh, and uh, relationships and strategic partnerships and all. Okay. So, this is the outcome just as a one point summary if you want to make notes, strategic partnership that uh, open sea and uh, this Mediterranean sea and these things and all, then double the Indo-Greece uh, bilateral trade by 2030 which now it is 1.32 billion dollar, then all these uh, sectors, agriculture production, animal rearing, electronics, pharmaceutical sector, everywhere we should focus, then mobility and migrant partnership agreement uh, uh, will be uh, uh, discussed and uh, this thing okay signed, it will be finalized, then direct flights between the two countries to boost tourism. Then uh, uh, they all con they condemn all forms of terrorism. Then that regular meeting of NSA. Then UN uh, time you will support each other. EU trade related you will support each other. Cyprus issue will support each other. So this is the summary of all the things which we discussed till now. And your India Greece topic is over. Okay. So now about the sex education. Recently there was a I think in Bangalore one uh, uh, one father and a son. They were minor son actually. They were uh, arrested because they were sexually abusing uh, another girl their own family relative girl. So, that's a very shocking thing and uh, this is not, uh, some things comes into news. There are many things happening in many rural areas or maybe in urban also in closed, uh, even rich class society and all where these uncles are uh, sexually abusing the niece and even nephews, the small boys also. So, these kind of things, so these people should be immediately killed. That is, that is what I feel but we have loss. Okay. So, we will uh, see into this thing what this article is telling and uh, may, I, I always tell you, you can learn many things through movies. Okay. So, recently uh, Bollywood usually does, you know, they do either remakes, they do this uh, adaptation of books or maybe biography of people. They do all this, but in between they do 
some good movies also which ideally in the box office it will it will not be running fine it will be flop only unless there is a big actor in that but these movies recently in last one or two years it came this uh, chhatri wali oh my god 2 and this janhit mejari uh, both uh, all three are talking about the same thing okay sex education in schools is mandatory the children has to study all these things because there is a Uh, myth or there is a thinking in our indian society that if you teach such things you are diverting the children you are influencing them wrong things uh, mean these dialogues doesn't work nowadays olden days it's understood okay now when everybody has this tab and phone and internet they are anyway if they have to get spoiled they will get spoiled they can type and search anything okay so why don't you give the actual learning which they should do okay meaning of consent okay meaning of consent was very well uh, explained in another movie okay if you have seen this movie pink movie which was again remade into south indian language also excellent movie it is a court room drama so no means no when even if a girl is like your friend is coming with you or uh, let it be anything okay Re- recently another movie was there, uh, this uh, yesterday was a movie has come okay in that also the same thing is there where uh, uh, this no means no okay without consent you should not be uh, forcing someone on on to these things so that m- please watch these movies this will give you more knowledge than what you read in hindu today so in this article as i told uh, earlier this month a man and his and his minor son were arrested for sexually abusing a 5 year old girl Uh, who was related to them okay so now uh, the national uh, crime record bureau they are the ones who have all the statistics 51000 cases were reported under this uh, poxo act in 2021 uh, children's uh, sexual offenses and uh, most of them are sexual assault and uh, how do we prevent this so uh, they are telling a comprehensive sexuality education which according to the un is a curriculum based process of teaching and learning about the cognitive emotional physical and social aspect of sex- sexuality okay so everything should be properly taught with a proper curriculum proper syllabus and then several state governments and certain section of society in india has adopted an ostrich like approach okay meaning a birds eye view kind of approach where you are just telling maybe something in uh, in books it may be there maybe in class it's not taught or maybe in exams questions may not come on that so nobody takes it seriously just for name sake they are doing it okay and our as i told traditional values and indian values and all they are this uh, patriarchal mindset hierarchical kill social structures and uh, mass media and social media everything tells as if uh, this all will negatively affect the young children so you should not teach these kind of things it's against our indian values and systems so all the programs currently are not good in india okay even though in many other countries it's already going on very uh, well and in the context of poxo cases uh, the madras delhi and meghalaya high court and also the chief justice of india several times have told that that uh, uh, consent the age of consent should be reduced not like only after 18 years a boy and girl can have a sexual relationship or anything it should be little more reduced maybe 16 years or uh, 15 years that uh, all the courts have told but the government has all, always uh, been against that and never have uh, thought about uh, reducing this age of consent okay so this one again it's not only to learn about violence and abuse but also to maintain healthy relationships you should be teaching the young teenagers and young adult about what is sexual consent and all okay this uh, tinder dating app that did a survey and in that they found out more than 60 percentage of mumbai population or youth they did not know what is consent when should we ask for it when should we tell no to something they don't even know this okay they are just this blind dating which happens in this youth population these days so concept of sexual consent is evolving through criminal jurisprudence the term itself may be a little bit western and english and all the consent and all but still that is something which you have to uh, teach everyone okay we have indian books of this ancient books uh, kama sutra and all in which the translation which was done by uh, richard burton in that he told about this consensual things and all okay but indians uh, don't know that is why i'm telling the non english language speaking people which is majority in our india uh, they should have some uh, access to vocabulary and terms in the regional languages and there should be some discussion forums where they can discuss in the uh, uh, vernacular language languages so that is urgently required okay and that ncrb data also shows it is necessary for schools to impart comprehensive sex education not only to children but also to parents and the caregivers also okay it's not about the children they are the parents and this uncle type people these people also should know everybody should know whoever is involved in this thing they should learn all these things okay so data show both male and female children are victim of uh, sexual abuse okay so now again if you see some points they have given the un population fund okay there is a unit under united nations uh, the right of access to comprehensive sexuality education is grounded in the fundamental human rights and it means to empower young people to protect their health well being and dignity okay so this if uh, mostly a topic a question will come on this you should use these kind of lines as an opening line because you are quoting the united nations okay that gives you extra marks so this line you should use and then uh, the un uh, recommends okay 
from the age of 5 along with formal education you should give the sexual education also and then young children will be taught about their bodies emotions the basic principle of consent and how to deal with violence bullying or abuse everything should be taught if you are on the victim side or if you are in the other side everything should be taught to you okay so three decades of research the case for comprehensive sex education okay that's a journal okay uh, in journal of adolescent health quoted by the who again this who things also you can use in your answer with comprehensive sexuality education young people will be better informed of their rights and sexuality and will be more likely to engage in sexual activity later programs built only on the concept of abstinence has not been effective meaning you keep telling like leave it no need to teach them they will learn with age like that not if you leave it is actually not working in our society that is why these many cases are being registered that is a registered one unregistered there will be even lakhs of cases okay so all these things okay are uh, far reaching if you don't uh, properly implement it uh, partner violence also even uh, domestic violence abuse everything which uh, which can be controlled by giving proper uh, sexual education okay so unfpa uh, operational guidance for comprehensive sexuality education there they are telling ensure that the programs include monitoring and evaluation component uh, considering to inequality uh, in uh, gender norms inequality gender norms and power in intimate relationship intimate partner violence meaning every aspect okay you should be teaching them and there should be a monitoring process whether they actually studying there should be an evaluation process it's not like simply you put it in textbooks which is already now in some state syllabus and all it's already there but nobody is learning it okay then august 10 recently 2023 kerala's uh, state board okay state council of like you have ncrt in the center there is this scrt in the state so kerala's that scrt has informed the kerala high court that uh, they will uh, spread the awareness about poxo and in the curriculum they will include it from 2024 25 okay kerala has been in the forefront when it comes to these kind of things and many times they have done whether it be rights to uh, transgenders or whether uh, any anything uh, uh, which is little bit everybody hesitate to implement kerala usually implements it first okay so that uh, anyway other states also has to follow it and it is hope that the curriculum is holistic and not simply related to legality okay meaning only simply writing the laws is not enough the proper education should be given to them then again unesco's report 2021 global status report it is by unesco okay the journey towards comprehensive sexuality education so this one uh, says the capacity building of teachers is also critical because many teachers tell that we don't have proper information of what to teach or how to teach uh, we don't have the knowledge on these diverse topics which the government is asking us to do okay so there only jharkhand's one example they are quoting again this you should use in your answer an ngo is the one who is teaching there or spreading awareness about all the sexual programs and aids control program all these things they were doing a program called udan in jharkhand so that uh, that means if teachers cannot do use these kind of ngos ngos will have maybe more knowledge or maybe they will research enough and they will have access to the government bodies also and they will do the teaching so arrange such programs in your schools or colleges where some session is there uh, conducted by these ngos okay so this jharkhand model also you can use in your answer in india the responsibility of sexual education is vested with the state government okay state is the one who has to do because uh, education is in general in concurrent list where both can make laws but sex education is assigned to the state center has told already whatever laws you want to make you can law, make you can make so hopefully it is, uh, it is high time that we do it and hopefully we'll see state will follow the framework of this uh, united nations that uh, population fund and uh, they will uh, implement it okay so this is the second article now the third is a very simple a very small article uh, g20 summit as i told is going to happen on september uh, 9th in india so that time some things to be discussed author has suggested two three points that quickly two three points i will tell okay and uh, today you would have seen another news also uh, the toyota and uh, uh, india has uh, collaborated and uh, the innova car which they have uh, a fully Uh, run on ethanol car or something or a flex fuel kind of car meaning either you can put ethanol or you can put petrol that way one car the, for the very first time in the world has been made in india okay meaning uh, made in india means toyota and india in collaboration has made for india okay so that's a big news today so like that green related thing clean energy is and all is the future and you will see many such things happening in the upcoming days so now author is telling uh, g20 countries which are going to come now they'll come in 20 these big big planes and their staff everyone will come so you itself will spread uh, make lot of carbon emission and all these things and uh, but you itself claim that you will uh, make net zero okay net zero is different from gross zero okay gross zero means you will Uh, not implement uh, sorry not uh, emit any carbon okay but that is not possible you need carbon for everything okay so net zero means you are emitting suppose 100 units of carbon you will uh, maybe plant many trees or do or some carbon sequestration program that that 100 units is sucked back into that also okay so that way net net it will be zero the uh, emitting and the, this thing will be uh, uh, zero 
the difference will be zero okay and maybe if you want you can make it negative also we will uh, sequestrate more that uh, there will be nothing left in the uh, environment so that is called the net zero concept so it's time for g20 to act as a united group with uh, collaboration coordination and competition also you should have some uh, benefits that okay if i do it first then i will get some incentive or if you do it faster you will get some incentive so something they should implement a model so that everybody in a race uh, mo mode they will try to achieve this okay so september 9 10 the g20 summit in delhi will be there and after that we later we have the united nations uh, cop 28 or the general climate summit will happen unfcc summit so before that if g20 decides something it's a good uh, thing for india also because india is the president now so under india's presidency if we decide something great a global thing like we already did the international solar alliance and all india only did with france so if we do something that will be a good thing for us to go and sit in the un, UN also later okay so uh, they are telling the commitment has improved by everyone. Uh, renewable source energy provide 29 percentage of the energy mix in 2021. Earlier it was 19 percentage in 2010. So we have improved our uh, this thing energy mix, uh, meaning more renewable energy we are uh, doing. Okay, and India also in the last decade has become the world's third largest producer of renewable energy, setting targets to continue the expansion of installed renewable to account for 50 percentage okay by 2030 we want 50 percentage of indian energy to be from uh, renewable energy okay whether it's solar or wind or water we have to do that okay and government needs to have a bigger shift okay because the world carbon budget is shrinking meaning we had a target like this much only we can emit carbon in the upcoming few years that thing is getting over okay we have already uh, emitted that much carbon that that is getting shrinking so we should do a bigger shift if you have to uh, counter this okay so two three three action areas they are uh, the author is telling First is governance structure. Okay, this uh, national level, local level, all the G20 countries should have an improved governance process for this just energy, just means fair, okay, just energy uh, transition. Okay, so clear structures you should establish something, some body should be there which coordinate, they should keep meeting uh, through that uh, body. You should clarify the responsibilities of like who will do what, like in ministries, we have environment ministry, we have water ministry, we have forest ministry. You should all have a proper structure at the, all the levels, not only central level, state level, local level. Uh, you should have something okay and the progress indicators how will you measure it should not be the old traditional ones like okay we made this this much unit of carbon we gave a job to 100 people that is not enough what job are you giving is it sustainable job are you again again innovating new things so the type of jobs who has access to them how who are which communities participating okay what difference it is from the previous so you should do something new new innovative ones and not only the traditional indicators uh, going forward okay so g20 countries could establish a multi-ministerial task force or a joint working committee okay where the government bodies will be there non-government maybe ngos type will be there think tanks will be there everybody can come together okay south africa's example they are giving they already made a just transition framework led by the president climate committee only okay president climate commission they made a commission so other g20 members can learn from south africa and implement it or associate with their own uh, programs okay and new uh, roadmaps and framework you can do this is point number one governance structure point number two is India is the G20 president and India should see this transition as a as to diversify G20 member economies to ensure long term economic stability. Okay, so here finance is the point. Second point is about finance. Okay, first the structure. Second is the finance. International financial institutions, okay, whichever bodies are there, the green funding related many bodies are there. So they should have play a critical role and uh, they should deploy vast amount uh, of renewable energy, grid infrastructure, uh, low carbon industrial technology and all these things you should invest. Okay, and the, especially the production of green steel okay where lesser carbon emission is there or some other low carbon technology is used because uh, carbon and steel industry they are telling that it's the most hard most hard to uh, come out where carbon is fully involved in that uh, sector it's very hard to tell uh, net zero carbon there okay so you should have some proper mandates given to all these international institutions the multi-development bank like you have new development bank you have asian development bank you have the world bank you have imf everybody should have some targets given like okay like this like this funding should be given and everybody should seriously do it not like okay First you do then i will do that way it won't work okay so this decarbonization of the sector should happen and the government must implement for that also effective monitoring clear mandate should be set low carbon procurement upskill the procurement officers uh, set time bound target to harness the full potential of green public procurement okay everything sh should be green which everybody meaning the government also when purchase something for government construction all you should make by the green steel instead of the other thing you should set the examples okay so that public procurement also uh, should be green okay so 
structure over finance over now third point is transparency okay doing all this there should be transparency there should be accountability we already have existing mechanisms like g20 energy transition and sustainable finance working group we have this just energy transition partnership which we i think one or two years back only this thing came so these things are all we already have so use it properly just for uh, signing agreements and then showing off to the world and media you should not make uh, bodies or uh, banks okay you should uh, use it properly okay so here again uh, uh, reliable information about all the plants the projects of oil gas coal production because you know china and all hides lot of information they did not tell the uh, world the correct things so you should be transparent and tell like okay this this much this much carbon is there this much plants we have installed newly so everything if you tell properly only then the world thing you can properly calculate okay so it cannot the full thing cannot be run alone uh, these three action areas which we told now okay the finance the structure and the transparency Uh, G20 should ensure that there is a race kind of format, uh, and uh, it's not like one or two countries at the expense of one or two countries you will make the uh, green, uh, sorry, the earth a green place. Everybody has to participate. Also, the outcome document of this July's uh, G20 Energy Transition Ministers Meeting, uh, which which is named that only, just affordable and inclusive energy transition pathway. So that outcomes of that document and all you should take into consideration. You should collaborate with each other, and so we will wait for the G20 summit uh, where the heads, the main head. of the state and government of everyone will come together they should pass a declaration okay like we have delhi declaration egypt declaration so when people meet a very powerful some treaty or declaration will come out so we are hoping for that okay so we have no time to waste we have already seen the devastating effects in the last few, uh, one year if you see lot of cyclones earthquakes uh, this uh, floods uh, uh, landslides everything is happening too much in the last uh, one year so we have seen already so we have to act now or it will be very late okay so again if you want to learn all these things in proper mcq form Format and notes format. Enroll to our individual packs of current affairs. Like the subjects packs are there, as I told. The full batch two test series is there. The combo packs is there. Okay, special gifts are there for our students who enroll to our combo packs. And everything is ending. Everything is ending August thirty one. So please WhatsApp me in the given number. and tell me in comment section whether you uh, like all these things the day detailing it in which we are doing based on that we can improve also and uh, watch the foundation if you are not enrolling to anything just watch the foundation and begin the preparation properly instagram id is also given please follow there so i'll wind up this video thank you and have a nice day